mallard ducks, mountain dew, and making hunting better. Sounds like an interesting combination. Well, that's what I'm talking about today. Plus, my two-year-old interrupts me Thank with a package. Sweetheart. I'm Joel Strickland, and surviving duck season starts right now. Thanks for watching Surviving Duck Season, where we feed your waterfowl obsession and help you to maximize your experience. Now, did y'all see this video from Mid Valley Mercenaries? They were talking about favorite blind snacks. It's a pretty fun video. I'll leave the link in the description. Now, I like those guys. I watch a lot of their videos. And on that particular video, I discovered a unique connection that I have with Thomas. Mountain Dew. Well, Thomas was talking about all the different Mountain Dew cans and stuff, the collectibles from over the years. And uh, in fact, I've got some of those myself. Uh, I couldn't find many of them. I've got a box somewhere with a bunch of that stuff in it because I collect them too. This is one I, that I pulled out. Uh, I've collected all kinds of stuff like that. I, I don't really get into the weird flavors, just the regular Mountain Dew. That's kind of what I like. But I do have something in my possession that any true Mountain Dew connoisseur may perhaps covet. Mountain Dew throwback. Oh, I'm not talking about in a can. You know, I, I do have that too. I'm not talking about plastic. Oh no, it's in a glass bottle. Oh yes, it's true. I actually have a couple of them left. A Mountain Dew throwback came out probably about seven or eight years ago, I guess. Uh, first they had it in a can and a plastic 20 ounce bottle, then in glass. Now, what is this Mountain Dew throwback that you speak of? Well, if you drink Mountain Dew, there's absolutely nothing like it. It's the way they used to make it. Mm. Smooth, real sugar, not that high fructose corn syrup, no aftertaste. If you've ever had it before, you know what I'm talking about. Every time I found them at the store, I'd buy them out. Usually there's only about four or five packs of them, so I'd get them all. Um, and then about a year or so ago, I picked up four packs uh, when I was at the store. Haven't seen any more since then, not in glass. So I've been rationing them out to myself. Um, I even used one in a video that I made a few months ago about the greatest mystery in duck hunting. If you haven't seen that one, make sure you check it out later. After I drink this one, I'm only going to have one left until maybe they make more or I found some more. So what does that have to do with today's video? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Uh, I just wanted a reason to drink one of these, and today being my birthday, I felt like it was a good time to drink one and share it with you. It's one of my favorite things, just like mallard ducks. I go out of my way sometimes, way out of my way to get them. So I got a comment on one of my videos recently uh, from Ethan Mathias, and he asked, Hey Joel, what do you do outside of Cypress Crossing in Arkansas to help better the future of duck hunting? Well, I think that's a good question. Uh, it's not just a question for me though. I think it's a question that we all should consider, especially if you've lived the obsession of waterfowling for a while. So I'm going to tell you how I answer. Every year I take kids hunting, kids that don't belong to me. I've done it for a very, very long time. Over the years, I've also supported uh, all kinds of projects and organizations who promote hunting and conservation. I've spent the last 25 years of my life telling the story of American hunters, whether it's deer, big game, turkeys, and especially my passion, waterfowl. It's all been through various television shows and series that I've produced. Now, Surviving Duck Season is a continuation of that. Actually, I feel like it's taken it to the next level because I feel like it's the best way that I can give back to waterfowl and the waterfowl hunting community. <laughs> if you're a real duck hunter or aspire to be one, this channel is made for you. Uh, my mission through this channel has been to bring you interesting and entertaining waterfowl content that helps to feed your waterfowl obsession. And I also want to help you maximize your hunting experience by giving you ideas, tips, and product suggestions. Real, honest, and no fluff. My overall goal is to help make the waterfowl hunting community a stronger brotherhood that helps one another and celebrates our successes and the obsession. Now one thing I've always loved to do is tell other people's stories too. 
uh, their passion, their journey, their successes. And I've been working on a special project uh, and over the next several weeks, I'll be sharing more of those incredible stories with you. So what about you? How can you make hunting better for the future? Well, if you're a new duck hunter, my expectations for you is to be a good steward of the resource and be ethical and respectful of the land, wildlife, and your fellow hunters. Uh, if you're a seasoned hunter, give back by taking a new guy under your wing. Teach him the ropes, not just how to kill ducks, but all of the other things that go along with it that makes duck hunting what it's really supposed to be. And help me with my mission. If you like my content and want duck hunting to improve for everybody, smash that like button. But you can do more. Show your support and join the tribe by hitting that subscribe button. And please share this content with your friends on social media. All of that helps us to get the message out there. Now, I had a guy ask me the other day about what an obsessed duck hunter was. What does that mean? Uh, he wasn't a duck hunter, so he wanted me to articulate it to him to help him understand. You know what? It was not an easy thing to do. Uh, I told him that there was just something inside of me that made me want to go. Uh, it's been that way ever since I started duck hunting. It made me choose where I went to college, uh, choose my schedule, my career. It's kept me living in the state of Arkansas when I could have moved elsewhere. I go when the weather isn't good or I don't think that hunting is going to be that great. It's the idea that you just don't want to miss anything uh, because every day is different and there's always a chance of seeing something that you've never seen before. If you're an obsessed duck hunter, there's so much that I don't have to explain to you about the passion because you get it. You know what I'm talking about. Duck hunters are unique. What are y'all doing? Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I got a little gift and they want me to open it right now. So we're going to do that while I got the camera on. Let's see what we got here. It's a hand-drawn... Belle was my first real duck hunting dog. Isn't that something? And then this is... Wow. This is Jazzy. And Jazzy was business so much of the time, and that's just exactly the look that she always had looking up at the ducks. Just locked on them. Indy. Indy. Is that Indy? Mm -hmm. My current dog. And I love the way that he, uh, he got her face, because she's always got that kind of cock sideways look on her face. I just love. Isn't that something? That is absolutely incredible. Happy birthday, Daddy. Thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> that is just such a special and thoughtful gift. Uh, dogs have been such an important part of my life. Uh, they mean so much to me. And uh, I made a video about some of my favorite duck hunting dogs from over the years. And I put it together. Check it out right here if you haven't seen it. Also, check this video out right here. It's the video I was telling you about before about the greatest mystery in duck hunting. I'm Joel Strickland. God bless, and I'll see you on the next video.